Bill Deweese here from voice-over-training.org, and today for something completely different. I thought this would be a lot of fun. I've recently gotten to know Mr. Dan McComas, who's my special guest today from Washington, D.C. Dan, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Bill. Thanks a lot. Dan, oh, I'm, I'm doing great, thank you. It's Friday. I could not be any better. <laughs> yes, sir. TGIF yes, sir. and all that good stuff. Dan is a talented actor. You do on-camera work. You're a voiceover talent. And whether you realize this or not, you have seen Dan in a number of major motion pictures. And I thought that might might be fun to kind of delve into a little bit. Dan, tell us some of the credits in terms of the movies that you've been in. Well, uh, Bill, I, maybe they've seen the back of my head in a lot of movies. But, you know, because <laughs> no, uh, a lot of it is... You know, as you know, we're 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 all freelancers, and um, I do I do some on camera work. I used to do uh, uh, TV news, and um, but as far as the, uh, the the movie credits, they are basically as a background actor. They they call it background. I have had a uh, what used to be called a bit player. It's a featured role player now, where I played uh, Bo Bridges' son. I don't know if any of your viewers would remember Bo Bridges, but uh, oh, I remember Bo Bridges. Yeah, you remember Sea Hunt. No. Yeah, see, you're too young for that. But hey, Yeah, that's just, it. I'm too young for that. I, I can't remember just, the last time I was told that, that I was too young for something. But anyhow. Yeah, his brother just won the Academy Award uh, last year, right? For the yes. you know, country singer, Jeff Jeff Bridges. Yes. But anyway, um, you know, along with the uh, the voiceover and uh, uh, some, on-camera, uh, some on-camera work for industrial films and things, um, I've had... Um, it's a lot of fun to do this. It's uh, it's called extra work or background work, and uh, you can do it. Uh, typically, it's uh, I'm in the Washington D.C. area, so it would be for uh, uh, Screen Actors Guild or uh, AFTRA, which I'm a member of both. Um, although they use non-union talent as well for these uh, for these movies, and maybe some of your viewers can, you know, you look in the newspapers, you follow where some of these movies are are, are being filmed, and uh, of course, a lot here in Washington D.C. because of the backdrop. And the last one that I was just in that just wrapped in this area is called Game Change, and it's about uh, Sarah Palin's campaign with. Um, uh, John McCain, who's played by Ed Harris, and Sarah oh. Palin is played by Julianne Moore, and she's a dead ringer. Oh my gosh, it's scary. really. Uh huh. I then, can't believe uh, they didn't use Tina Fey. No, no, I think they were trying to be serious in this one, but <laughs> uh, uh, so I don't know why they used me. But anyway, uh, uh, Woody Harrelson's also in it. Woody no has kidding. this big hippie bus that he rides in and he's uh he's still uh he's a guy on the edge i mean in a funny way he's very funny in some of these takes um so uh did some crowd scenes for that did some uh background scenes it, if you think about it uh, next time um uh, your viewers are uh and i'll just address this to you uh, wonderful viewers as well um next time you watch a movie or uh uh la not la law but uh what what, is, what are some of those um uh, Oh, some of the spinoffs from, um, like, yeah, just the, Law & Order and... Yeah, Law & Order, exactly. Um, if, if you watch that, uh, you'll see a lot of people walking behind uh, all the actors uh, right. to, to give it some motion and, uh, and some feeling. And uh, that's pretty much what uh, a lot of people do. Uh, to And some people do it to earn their entire living. They do lots of movies and get lots of days on movie sets. Um, uh, and as I said earlier, it can be fun, especially when you're uh, at home doing a lot of uh, voiceovers, uh, isolated. It's fun to get out and talk to uh, to other actors and uh, and then see some of the, the other actors and watch the directors. Well, I'm totally fascinated by it. And, and at some point, I mean, I like to ask about, you know, how you get into, into that kind of thing. But I'm just dying to know what's it like to work with people like like uh, Ed Harris and, and uh, Julianne Moore and the many others that you've worked with. You know, most of them are very, uh, um, they're very much fun and they're, they're, uh, uh, they're very funny. I mean, Woody Harrelson was, was giving me the eyes doing one of these on one of our scenes and cause he's, <laughs> kind of, he's kind of crazy. Uh, yeah. So I hear uh, Yeah. And, and Ed Harris was actually kind of directing the crowd. We had a big crowd scene where, uh, it's the, uh, the inauguration, uh, speech, um, or where he, where he accepts Sarah Palin as his vice president. And there's, you know, maybe there's uh, 300 of us, but it's meant to look like 3,000 of us, and they're all right. different kind of camera angles and so forth. And Sarah Palin, you know, You're right. <laughs> has her family behind her with some other lookalikes. Um, but um, 
most of the time it's it's fun. Um, sometimes the they don't. I think it's in some of their uh, movie actors' contracts where they don't want the extras looking at them or talking, to, you know, talking to them. So, but most of the people that I've met, you know, what he's you talk to us, and Ed Harris has talked to us, and uh, uh, one of the other ones that I did, Bill, was um, uh, it's called Jay Edgar, and it's a Clint Eastwood movie uh, with Leo Di- Di- DiCaprio in it. And oh. Clint came up. Uh, I played a photographer in that in a courtroom scene with the 1930s uh, uh, camera and. Right. Um, Clint Eastwood came over, he's 81 now, uh, and he's in great shape. He came over and said, I want to thank you guys for helping us out with this movie. And he was very nice. And I could, I just, I could just think of dirty Harry and (laughs) and I'm high and it's just, you know, he's such an icon. He is. That was a lot of fun. And then, and just so your viewers know, Leo DiCaprio is taller than you think. He's six foot one or something. Really? I would have never guessed that. I would have guessed five ten-ish. Yeah, he's because he looks kind of small in his uh, in his films, but uh, he does. Now you so, were in uh, uh, you were also in Transformers too, right? Uh, I think this last one is Transformers three. Right. Oh, um, so right? okay, yeah. you were in that one. Uh, this past this past summer, okay. and I played a SWAT officer, which is hilarious because my son is the real deal. He's an Iraq War veteran, actually getting ready to deploy again to Iraq. No kidding. Uh, in August, yeah. So you know, uh, mom and dad are. He's a soldier. He wants to. It's it's just a nail-biting year for us. Uh, But, um, yeah, I mean, he's he's a Capitol Police officer as well. And when I told him I was going to be a SWAT officer, he just he just howled because. (laughs) And my main fear, Bill, was that I would do a face plant in front of the camera as we're running out of the SWAT vehicle because all these cars they call them flippers. Uh, The cars are flipping and explosions and everything, and there's really no chance for a take two unless it's going to cost a million bucks. So I'm glad I didn't fall, which I which I didn't because you'll never work in this town again. <laughs> that's, that's what I get. So, um, but, th- but that was a lot of fun too, uh, to, to just to watch that movie. I mean, there's a lot of, if some people have done this, they know there's some, a lot of sitting around time, but it's, it's fun to, to, to talk to the other actors and uh, to do something, something different. So you're talking about yeah. movies that, that aren't even out yet. You just mentioned three movies that have yet to hit the, uh, hit the screen. So you're, you're way ahead of the curve. Yeah, I think uh, Transformers uh, three comes out this summer. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not sure about the other two. The uh, uh, Sarah Palin film Game Change is going to be on HBO, um, and Jay Edgar I think is going to be a, a film. So okay. I'm not really yeah. So um, anyway, it's 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 quite a change now. I can hear some some folks going. Well, let's see, because but because I, I can tell you, I mean, for uh, for union people, uh, the pay grade is. I think it's $150, $160 for an eight-hour day. But usually you do more, and usually there's some kinds of penalties and things like that. So it it can be three or $400 a day. Okay. But it's for a full day, and you're driving and everything. And and when we were talking earlier, Bill's going, let's see, well, I could do that in 20 minutes in my PJ. So uh, there's something to be said. Something to be said about that. Yeah, um, it, yeah. When you when you can audition and perform from your home, um, yeah, it, it is a it's a beautiful thing. So that and that's what I uh, that's what I prefer to do as well. Uh, this this just uh, breaks breaks things up uh, for me personally to to get out and oh talk to people. Oh my gosh, what what is that? Yeah, I haven't done that for years. <laughs> Not live, right? Not live. That's right. That's right. Well, you know, there are a lot of people who follow this this blog that that are actors. Uh, I mean, I guess you an argument could be made that all of us who are voiceover talent are actors. But I mean, but you're a real actor. I mean, nobody would ever dare put me in front, you know, of a movie camera. Uh, but for those who have an interest in maybe using that as an additional avenue of income or just for fun to, you know, because they're an actor and they would like to get involved. What's, what's the path? How do you, how do you do that kind of thing? Well, um, and and we talked about actors too, because I, I come more from a broadcasting background. And, um, so I, and I think I, I'd seen one of your videos where the last play you were ever in was a church play. back (laughs) Yeah. 10 or 12. Yeah, ten or twelve. Right. So, uh, yeah, my 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 biggest credit uh, is Love Hits Wilbur in ninth grade. I was the lead in that, so <laughs> slayed the audience too. By the way, I'm sure you did. Um, but um, so, but but I do audition for, and they're really not principal acting roles. I was just at a casting agency yesterday to audition. 
or and, and I'll get back to your question too, which has to do with casting agencies. But she said, "Well, you're more like a, a spokesperson or a host." And I said, "That's right." She says, "Well, do, do you have a monologue?" Because that was scaring me because I'm really, you know, not a what I'd call a actor like my nephew Sean. Um, but I did work up one, and she said, well, do you feel confident doing it? I said, not really. And she goes, well, just go ahead and read some copy here. That's fine. Don't worry about it, because I'd rather use you as a spokesperson type. And so I think that's that's more of my niche than, you know, a dramatic actor, because there are a lot of roles uh, in uh, industrial films, training films, especially here in the government for uh, a lot of the government workers here mm. in D.C. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the state workers. but. A lot of the work here uh, is generated through through the casting agencies, uh, like Central Casting or Carlin Davis Casting, Taylor Royal in Baltimore, uh, Pat Moran. Those people, uh, and, and they'll send you on auditions for commercials and things. And yeah, I mean, one of the goals is to uh, you know get speaking parts, and right. I, I hope to at, at some point, even if, even if it's a small speaking part, that would be great. Right. Um, but. Um, but, but this last one, Game Change, needed hundreds of people, so they used a lot of non-union people as well. So you don't have to be in the union necessarily to be in some of these films. And I think their pay was $65 for the day, but they most of those folks were there just to see what's going on. And sure. meet, you, know, not, you don't meet the stars, but you, you get to watch the director in action and watch the stars in action. And it's, um, it's, it's a lot of fun. So uh, you know, each state has, a, uh, I think, a film. Uh, what is it? Um, I don't know. It's 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 this you know the state film industry and uh, people can check there on, on the web to see if anybody's filming. Okay. A lot of people are doing um, independent films too, and you can check on Craigslist. I think you'll mm. see they're always looking for actors. I mean, you have to be careful because some you know some of them are probably strange strange films. But sure, sure. Um, so I would just I would just uh, I would just say that you know Craigslist. Uh, Check in with your casting agencies if you're in a if you're in a mid sized to larger uh, town, uh, and uh, let them know that you'd like to do background work. And they're they're very open to that because they're looking for people a lot of times for commercials and films. It's not just or training films. Okay, okay. so lots of opportunities. I, I think there are. If you're in a small town, it might be tougher. Yeah. Uh, you know, unless you want to travel. I mean, people travel. The last film I was in, they were coming from Philly and coming up from. Rich men. I mean, a lot of a lot of hungry actors out there. So they were, sure. they were coming up, but also in the Screen Actors Guild, if you work uh, or, or after, if you work a certain amount of days a year or earn a certain amount of money, you, you get health insurance, and there's also a pension program. So right. that's why some people are very happy to you know just have it have a day's work, and then you never know you never know what can happen. Right. Well. Right. I'm, I'm sure stranger things that have, have have happened than having somebody being pulled as an extra out of a of a movie set to maybe a bigger part. Well, that that happened to me on my first one, which was uh, really was a, a movie called Space, which was based on James Michener's novel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think it was that great. I, in fact, one of my best friends watched it, and I was I had a whole week's worth of work uh, as an actor, but also as a, what's called a stand-in, and there's also room for people to do stand-ins where you go and stand in for the actor on his or her mark and uh they do the lighting around you and then then the first team comes in and actually does does the work okay but everything's set up and ready for them so i i did that a stand-in for james garner really if anybody remembers maverick oh yeah or the rockford files yes Yeah, oh, absolutely. so that was fun. But they, they pulled me out of the crowd and they said, uh, you look like you could be Bo Bridges' son. And you know, <laughs> Bo Bridges is probably, maybe he's five or eight years older than me. I said, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, uh, and it was, yeah, it, was, it was a great week. And I did see something cool happen. I said, because you're there to watch the directors and the director, uh, James Brunner had to get really mad in, in this, this film. And he did it a few times, and he got mad, but not mad enough for the director. So the director made him do it like twelve times, and he oh, wow. got madder each time because he didn't want to do it. He's, you know, I'm James Garner. So after like the twelfth time, the act, the uh, the director said, "Cut, we're going to print that one." And uh, James Garner went, "Oh, you got me, didn't he?" But <laughs> it, it, it's just uh, I think Blair Brown was in that, and gosh, this was a long, this one was a longer longer time ago. Well, it's so funny when, when we first actually, when Dan and I first began talking, it was about voiceover business. 
stuff and you're, you're looking to, to kind of expand your voiceover business. And then you mentioned you had uh, recently uh, done some filming for Transformers 3 and I and come to find out you've done all this work and I you know there are so many uh, actors out there uh, and even voiceover talent who would find this kind of thing fascinating. I, certainly I would. I mean if I had the opportunity to, to do anything in a feature film I think that would just be the coolest thing ever. I thought it'd be fun to talk about and find out exactly how you do that. So thanks for sharing your, your experience and your wisdom and your insight. And now we'll be looking for you. And yeah, I do prob- well, you may see me in, uh, in game change. Cause it's sort of a close up as right. a, I was a staff member in, in that one, but a lot of times it's just the background and you know, it, Here's the back of my head, Bill. Just <laughs> okay, all right, we'll be looking for that. Perfect. You'll be looking for the, yeah. And by the way, head, so. it, it, let's talk, how's your voiceover business going? How are things going in that in that area? Well, I'll, t- I'll tell you what, I, um, you know, I've done a, a, a medical narration not too long ago that was right. 26 pages, and um, thank you for the audio dictionaries that, that you know, you spell it out, Amprenavir. I said, because, I, you know, you've done that, I'm sure. A lot of, right. a lot of your, uh, a lot of folks out there have done that. And, uh, I was a, a narration for, uh, for, uh, for a union, but here's the thing. I do want to get more, uh, voiceover work. And, and, uh, I've also done some looping too. If, if anybody knows what that is, where, uh, it was for the American Red Cross and an actor's voice was blown out by a snowblower in Colorado. So they had me listen. I guess I sounded like that actor and they selected me. And then I, a second later, I, I said, his lines. Uh, I, I guess it's like doing a Godzilla movie too, you know. Where, you and then know, they dub it in. Dubbing it in. So, but that that was a lot of fun, and I think being a, a musician and a drummer helped me with with the ti- timing on that one. Oh, I didn't know you were a drummer. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's why I can't hear you. Uh, oh, okay. yeah, that, I'm sure that would do it. Splashes. And, <laughs> anyway, uh, still still play a little bit, a little bit of guitar, but. Um, anyway, I, what was I talking about? Oh, voice your voiceover business. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that, that, uh, <laughs> the one thing I did want to say uh, about that is, yeah, I mean, we, we all, you know, everybody needs and wants more work. And, um, the one thing I did, and I, I met Bill, uh, gosh, I think I saw one of your blogs and we, we talked and so forth. And, and he, he, he told me, uh, well, I guess he does on his blogs that he's got a program, uh, about marketing, which is the hugest thing. I mean, you can have the best voice, and, and Bill said this about some people he's spoken with. You know, the best voice on the planet, but if you really don't, if nobody hears you, or you don't really know how to market and work with clients and find them, um, you know, you're, you know, you'll be starving. And um, so, uh, so I actually, I actually purchased Bill's program, and no, I'm not getting paid for this uh, endorsement. Say, so, wow, here. this is uh, a nice plug. I, Unless you want to buy me a whisper room, Bill. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll talk later about that. Or right, we'll talk. All right. Later. <laughs> but, but anyway, uh, I just want to say it's it's been so helpful to find the different ways that you can. That, and this is the way Bill does it. I mean, he 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 does it exactly this way, and he's got he can do it a lot less now because he's 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 a busy guy and very talented. But but it was the marketing, I think, Bill, and you said this that yeah. that really brought you uh, you know to where you are now, and so. Um, I would just like to say, you know, email Bill or call him or just, uh, you know, talk to him about his program because it's really, I'm starting to implement it now. I just, just purchased it and it's, it's, it's really, uh, I know it's going to be fruitful and uh, I'm just getting the communications out. So I want to thank you for that, Bill. Well, Dan, thank you. I appreciate the plug. That was very, very kind and very gener- generous of you to say that. And your timing is perfect because it hasn't been released yet to the general population. And uh, getting ready to do that, so you were one of the very first to actually lay lay eyes on it. So I'm really I'm really glad you found it helpful. It really is my I call it my playbook because it's exactly what I do. It's the so many people said, well, I need you to break it down step by step. You know, what do I say? What do I, if I send an email? What do I write? If I talk to somebody, what do I say? Who do I ask for? You know, where do I look? How often? So it's you know it's just a breakdown of it's not it's not glamorous. And I was talking to somebody about it before. I mean, when you market, it's no different than any other business. I mean, marketing yourself can be can be a grind, but it, it is fun when you get the business. You bet, and it's it, and, and you're right. It's not that slick, but to me, and I think maybe a lot of people, it's like I really don't care about slickness. Just you know, tell me how to do this. Uh, just show me step by step how to do this, so I, I can you know at least get up to bat. And, right. And I think you're at a position now where. 
you have so many clients, and I, I think you might still do a, a, a pay for play, but I don't think you do a lot of that. And right. and the one video you did, and I, I would encourage, uh, I would encourage people to uh, subscribe to your blog because there's there's so much information there. You know about one of the just a typical week that you had where you were very successful, did lots of work without one audition, which is like, woohoo! It's like, yeah. <laughs> you know you've arrived when you can do it without an audition. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, but it's it's a big step forward for sure. What would it be like to <laughs> Get the video. Uh, now, Dan, hey, thanks. First of all, for that unsolicited plug, that was very kind of you to do that. And thanks for sharing your your experiences and your insight and your wisdom regarding the uh, you know the television and the film industry. I just I think that's completely fascinating. And I just thought there might be a number of people who would who would actually you know take that information, maybe run with it, and who knows, maybe we'll be catching glimpses of the back of their head in uh, future films that's to come. Right, that's right. And the thing is, you're near Chicago, so there are right. Uh, you just look up casting agencies, and it, I mean, if you if you are interested in. Uh, you just uh, say, do you, do you accept, uh, and they even take snapshots. You don't have to have a $500 headshot. Oh. Uh, snapshots, and, uh, you know, if they if they need someone like you, they'll they'll call you, and, you know, it's probably non-union work, but still, it's it's a fun it's a fun day. Now, for you, <laughs> you probably lose a little money that day, but... But it'd be fun. It might be like a vacation. It'd be, exactly. Yeah, it'd be something different. Or you can tell your clients, I, I, I'm in a movie, uh, can I get it to you... Tuesday. <laughs> I've been talking I've been with Dan McComas. And Dan, thanks. Dan, thanks again. It's been a real pleasure. Hey, what's your website address, by the way? Uh, it's Dan McComas, uh, D A N M C C O M A S dot com. There you thought we might want to get a plug in there. Again, Dan, thanks so much. Thank you very much.